here today with Dr. Michael John, LHSC's Medical Director of Infection Prevention and Control. And we're going to talk a little bit about antimicrobial resistant organisms, or ARLs, as they're commonly referred to. So Dr. John, what kind of antimicrobial resistant organisms are out there, and how do these germs become resistant to the antibiotics for treatment? So, uh, virtually all bacteria can become resistant to antibiotics and um, most of them already have amongst their population resistant organisms. Uh, we select out these resistant bacteria mostly through use of antibiotics. Um, I think a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that antibiotics have only been around for about 70 years and there really have been no new classes of antibiotics discovered since the 1960s. So, although we've modified antibiotics to keep them active against certain classes of bacteria, uh, we really are running out of antibiotics. Within the hospital, the uh, resistant bacteria or AROs that we probably have the most problem with at the moment are two. Uh, one is uh, a bacteria called Staph aureus, which becomes resistant to the antibiotic we use. We call it MRSA, medicine resistant Staph aureus. And the other one is Clostridium difficile, which is the most common cause of diarrhea, infectious diarrhea in hospitalized patients. With the general prevalence of AROs out there, um, what are the kinds of steps that LHSC is taking to sort of alleviate or reduce the occurrence of them in hospital? Well, because this is so important to patient safety, we do a lot of things to reduce the uh, prevalence of AROs in our hospital. So, for example, uh, we screen patients coming into our hospital for MRSA, and if they screen as positive, we isolate them in private rooms, use personal protective equipment when dealing with them, educate the patients and their families about AROs and, and how to would interact. Clostridium so, difficile is thought to be spread mostly through the environment by contamination of the environment with spores, and so one of the interventions for that is we improved cleaning standards in our hospitals um, and we comply with PIDAC standards in terms of cleaning um, and this should also help in prevention of the spread of other antibiotic resistant organisms as well. So another extremely important act um, thing of course is to prevent transmission from patient to patient and so one of the things we've done is run a hand hygiene campaign in our hospital and that's ongoing and we have improved our hand hygiene rates considerably uh, so that you know, in most clinical areas, uh, healthcare workers practice appropriate hand hygiene more than 90% of the time. Um, and so that prevents spread of these antibiotic resistant organisms from patient to patient, and at the same time prevents infection when dealing with uh, you know, wound care and things like that. Um, we also I, I mentioned earlier on that one of the reasons why we're seeing these antibiotic resistant organisms is because of selection of the resistant bugs through antibiotic use. So, this, you know, in the last sort of decade or so, there's become a realization that we have to use antibiotics more responsibly. And so, hospitals are now instituting what are called antibiotic stewardship programs. And this requires education of physicians and appropriate use of antibiotics, stopping antibiotics uh, when they're no longer needed, um, and in fact educating patients about antibiotics, and, and a lot of these educational campaigns are also going out to the community. So if I'm a member of the pub that I'm going to be coming into the hospital, what are the types of things that I can do to better protect myself against, against heart arrows? I think the first thing to remember is that the hospitals are still incredibly safe places, even with the arrows that we have. If you're coming in to visit family, uh, we'd ask you to only come in if you yourself are healthy. Um, you should wash your hands when entering and leaving our hospital. We have lots of alcohol-based hand drugs around the hospital. You should make sure that your immunizations are up to date, particularly your flu shots during the uh, winter season. And we also ask family members who are visiting not to go from patient to patient uh, because of the danger of transmitting uh, bacteria between patients in the hospital. So before coming to hospital, patients should familiarize themselves with the patient information booklet we give to them so they know what to expect. 
Um, they should themselves practice good hand hygiene, make sure that their immunizations are up to date. And very importantly, with any interactions with staff, they should not be afraid to ask staff whether they have practiced hand hygiene before being examined. It's, it's, hand hygiene is the most vital intervention in terms of spread and prevention of infection in our hospitals. And we actively encourage our patients to ask us if we have practiced hand hygiene. Thank you so much, Dr. John, for teaching us a little bit more about arrows and the kinds of things that we can do to better protect ourselves. You're welcome. I'm Mandy Jelinek, bringing you inside LHSC.